Mr Crispin here once again. Now I'm no mathematician but in today's video I'm going to be doing a little bit of trigonometry and this is a uh, follow-up to a video I made called Turning a Conical Feature. Uh, it's going to be all about triangles and generally things that don't matter to 99% um, of the population but if you struggle to sleep you may find this useful. Well first of all this is a reshoot. I uh, had filmed the video, posted it and within a couple of hours somebody had uh, commented questioning one of my tangent points. I've reviewed it and the maths and the answer I arrived at were correct but on the drawing I'd done on camera I had positioned a tangent point erroneously and of course I had been wondering how long it would take somebody to spot that and uh, well done to Kuk 1777 you passed the test. Now uh, back to where I left off on the video. When you have defined your lathe tool's position uh, by turning a diameter or touching on and picking up a face, what you have actually done is you have referenced the tangents at 90 degrees on your tool radius. As soon as you move away from those 90 degree positions and start rolling around the curve, you incur an error. And the further away you come from those positions, or the bigger the radius, the greater the error you incur. Now, what's going on here? Well, I'm going to draw it out. I'm going to start by uh, drawing on some geometry. So let's have the uh, 290 degrees with which I have defined the tool's position. I'm also going to have the tool radius. And the important thing with all this is to know what your tool radius is. Providing you know the tool radius and the angle you're turning, you can calculate things out. Also, we need the centre of the radius. And from that centre, we need the tangential point with the uh, diameter you're turning. And why do we need that? Well, that defines the point on the radius that is actually going to be doing the cutting. So uh, that is the point on the radius that will be responsible for the finished depth of your cut. And uh, from that you should be able to uh, gather that we need to know how far to wind the cross slide to account for that error. So uh, we can form a triangle. There's your uh, error in the radial direction, but there is the error in the direction you can accommodate for in your cross slide. That forms a little triangle. It's a right angle triangle. We could work out the angles because we know what we're machining, but at the moment there isn't enough information there to work out the lengths. To work out the lengths we have to look further afield. And I'm going to put in a bigger triangle all the way down here. And hopefully you can see some more triangles appearing now. An important point to mention at this stage is that the distance here to here is the same as the distance here to here. So if we can work out the overall length of that line and subtract from it the length of that line, we will be left with that gap, which is parallel to that gap and therefore the amount by which we need to move the cross line. So let's look for some triangles. Well, we need this length. And we can work that out by drawing this triangle in. Centre of the radius to the extremity of the radius is the radius. And in that case, that's 0 0.4. Right angle triangle again. Now, all we need is an angle. And this is 36.098. Why? Because if you play triangles and look at what you've got, all the angles in a triangle must add up to 180 degrees. I'm turning an angle of 36.098. I've got 90. That leaves me 53.902. So 53.902 plus 90 leaves 36.098. So it's just a game of triangles. And um, with that, I can calculate the length of this hypotenuse just using Sokotoa. And that comes out at 0 0.495. So I'm nearly there, but I need this overall length. Well, I can't get that overall length straight off the bat. But if I calculate this triangle, 
then we have the information we require. And why is that triangle worth bothering with? Well, we've got a point 0.4. 0 0.4, the angle is the same as the angle I'm turning, 36.098. Right angle here, um, that gives me a short side of 0 0.291. And now I can do a bit of addition. So if we take these uh, overall sizes we need to find, it's going to be 0 0.291 plus 0 0.4. Tall radius plus the side of that triangle, so naturally that's 0 0.691. Overall is 0 0.691. Minus from that, this hypotenuse leaves me with 0 0.196 from there to there and that was what I wanted to find. So to write this out in some kind of formula we can say that the size we need to find DE is equal to AC minus BC and if you're interested in uh, formulas that may be helpful. So that's how I've done it, that's how I've arrived at the calculated infeed required and hopefully that made some sense. Now I did mention that you needed to know the tool tip radius and uh, there's two sort of primary ways to do that. Either you use an insert out of a packet where it tells you or you have to measure it somehow. Now I don't know uh, what packet that insert came out of so I had to measure it and here's how I did it. This is a shadow graph and it allows you to project profiles. So the lathe tool goes on the stage and we can project the shadow of that lathe tool onto a screen. So the tool is projected via a lens and a mirror and you end up with the shadow being projected onto a screen. Now I could really do to have a graticule with various radii on but for now I can suffice with um, using a radius gauge to match up the radius. So that's it really, we found all our triangles, we found all our numbers, everyone's happy. Uh, now I got that maths from a Joe Pizinski video and he's actually created a whole formula for doing that. So go and have a look at his uh, channel should you wish to um, consider these matters anymore. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed watching and see you on the next video.